good morning everyone shall we start our class so today we have a last session of mcc class and today we are discussing advanced topics small small topics are there we are going to discuss we have theory topics and we have some theory with practical we are going to discuss now the first topic we'll discuss backup and recovery so please write down the heading today our first topic is backup and recovery till now we seen for our dc for our active directory server for our primary server we created one backup server that is a adc to avoid the load balancing to avoid the failover right and we discussed backup server of dscp server that is a right we created by the help of dscp failover service and we seen backup server of dns server also now like this we require backup for our data also because your data is very very important for you right and for your organization also and for your admin also now example here you are the admin of this organization in your network you have a server and the users are logging to the client computers so in every machine we have a local hard disk right the user has logged and the user is generating the data but whenever the user is generating the data so this data basically once you click save is going to store in local hard disk right but next day example the user data is available in client computer hard disk in case if this client machine is failed is not working so next day the user can log into other client machine but your user data is not available right user data is lost so the user is requesting to admin sir i want to access the data from the network and my data has to be stored in one centralized place sir so what we are doing we are taking the server and we are storing the user data in the server in server we have one drive example e drive and we are storing the user data in e drive and now from the network and this folder this this data share folder should be shared and we given the permission to user to access okay so from the network by using network path my users can access this data share folder yes whenever the user is creating some files so this data automatically is going to store in my server and next day if this client machine is not working so user can log into other client machine can access the data or not here yeah. yes we can access but that user data now is available in centralized place in server in e drive for example assume it one day your junior administrator has formatted this drive the server e drive is formatted or deleted so then user data is lost or not here yeah. so for that reason we are planning for backup right we are planning for backup so i want to go for backup i want to take the backup file so backup is a copy to your primary so we are taking the backup in f drive so we have backup files in f drive here okay so in future if the e drive is formatted or data folder is lost or some files are lost we have a backup file or not here so by using backup we can restore the user data that is important but assume it in future my right now my data original data is available in server e drive and backup files is available in server e drive so this data is storing in the local hard disk or not here now assume it if this local hard disk is burned or damaged can you give the 100% guarantee 365 days 24 by 7 your drive your hard disk will work properly no if one day if the hard disk is burned or damaged then what your user data is lost original data also lost and your backup files also is what here lost here so that's why the companies are planning to take the backup in removal hard disk or you can take the backup in tape drives <clears throat> or you can take the backup in your computers also in other computers you can make you can take the backup so we have this many places so if your original data is lost we have a backup in tape drives we have backup in removal hard disk so from there can we restore the data or not here right so example one day i went to the interview the person is asking this question to me sir in case if the server hard disk is burned or damaged right so can we go to the market can we pay a good amount can we purchase a new hard disk yes or no yes we can purchase in case one day if the server is not working is burned collapse so can you go to the market can you pay some amount can we purchase the new hardware server yes we can purchase we can go to the market we can purchase server but assume it one day your server hard disk 1 1 gb or maybe one day data is lost and go to the market pay some amount and tell to some company sir i want this data back one day 1 gb data back now tell me they will give 
no they can't give okay so what is important here hard disk is important no right server is important no the important is what user data example you're working in bank and every transaction bank is very very important and as it one hour transaction is lost then what so that's why every administrator has to plan for backup the admins are taking the backup daily or admins are taking the backup in a week or admins are taking the backup in 15 days or admins are taking backup in one month right so according to your requirement according to your needs important of your data you can plan for backup but the backup is very very important every admin has to plan for backup of your user data okay now in 2012 server operating system the microsoft is saying we can take the backup but in previous server operating system if you want to take the backup right so what you have to do you have to go to the run and you have to run this command that command is called nt backup so once you type nt backup once you click ok there are two options will open for you one is backup and one is a recovery by using backup we can take the backup by using recovery we can recover the data backup but in 2012 operating system this command is audited in 2012 server OS, this command will not work in 2012 server operating system if you want to take the backup we have to take the backup by the help of this service we have an option windows server backup service windows server backup so by using this windows server backup service i can take the backup but remember here this windows server backup service is available in all micro in 2012 server operating system but by default this service is not installed we have to install this service so previously we are taking the backup by using command that is called ng backup but now we are taking the backup and we are restoring the backup by using windows server backup but in 2012 we have one good feature we can take the backup of our local hard disk we can take the backup of other machine which is present in the lan also remotely we can take the backup one and we can take the backup online also we can take the backup online online means example i have some servers or i have some machines in banjarai's branch right i'm sitting on today on amirpet branch i want to take the backup of that branch computer so by using this windows server backup i can take the backup of other branch computer also there right so online backup feature also is available so when you taking the backup is asking the question to you sir you want to go for online backup or you want to take the backup of your local hard disk or you want to take the backup of other computer hard disk here right you have to plan for this one so what is backup here the microsoft is saying backup is a copy to your alternate media right prevent data lost and only the administrator can take the backup and when it is lost we can restore it okay so please write down these three points then we'll see the practical how to take the backup is done so if you want to take the backup in 2012 server OS, we have to take the help of windows server backup service and we have to install this service so please write down the first lab today installing windows server backup service today first lab is installing windows server backup service So please write down in system one server login as administrator in system one server login as a administrator
So you can see it. This is my system one. Server, I have 2012 operating system. This is my system one. If this machine is DC, no problem. If this machine is member server, no problem. If this machine is work group, also no problem. We can take the, we can install the Windows Server backup service. We can take the backup. Okay. So please write down. Open the Server Manager console. Open the Server Manager console and click on Add Roles and Features. Open the Server Manager console and click on Add Roles and Features. And click four times. Next, next, next. Click four times. Next, next, next. So click on Add Roles and Features and click four times. Next, next, next. So you can see here. Click next. One more time. Next. <clears throat> one more time next year and we are in roles but remember here this feature windows server backup service is not available in roles so we have to click on next and right now we are in features now in features if you come down here you can find here windows server backup service right don't check the box windows server backup check the box windows server backup and click on next and click on install and close click next click on install your installation started after that close it So now you can see here installation is succeeded on system one completed click on close now if I go to the tools here you can find if you come to the down the last one you can find here Windows Server backup or you can go to the start also you can find here okay shortcut is not showing here you can go to the server manager console you can open from here so once you open the Windows Server backup here service Now you have two options here if you want to take the local hard disk backup you can go for local backup if you want to take the backup of online we have option here online backup you can make the continue you can go for online backup here but I want to take the backup of local hard disk here so we have to go to the local backup and you can see here once I select local backup it is collecting the information and the right side this is called action panel window right and here we will get three options here one is backup once I want to take the backup now one is recovery we can recover the backup and one is backup schedule we can make the schedule of the backup also now here we have three options here backup schedule you can schedule the backup you can take the backup once means backup now 
and recover means we can recover the deleted files lost files here okay but we'll go for the next step that is called how to take the backup here so please write down creating backup underline this one creating backup <clears throat> So write down in system one server open the e drive in system one server open the e drive open the e drive create one folder by the name data create one folder by the name data create one folder by the name data and in this folder create some files file one file two and in this folder create some files file 1 and file 2 in this folder create some files file 1 and file 2 okay and you can see i have f drive i want to take the backup in the f drive there so if i go to the server if i open the computer you can find two drives are there e drive i want to take i will create the data here original data is available i want to take the backup in f drive right now f drive is empty here so open the e drive and create one folder here so i'm creating one folder by the name of data and in this folder create some files i'm creating file one and file two and in file one i'm adding some content to check so assume it this is my user content is available so save this content close this one so we have data folder in e drive Okay, we want to take the backup in F drive. And we want to take the backup, you have to take use Windows Server backup service. So please write down next line. Open the Windows Server backup service. Open the Windows Server backup service. Open the Windows Server backup service. So write down select local backup. Select local backup. And click on backup once click on backup once now once you click this backup once here one new window will open and we have to continue this one so write down click next now once you click next here in next page is asking sir what backup you want to take you want to go for full server backup or custom backup full server backup means you're complete hard disk backup it will take and custom backup means what we can decide which drive or which folder or which file or which particular file i want to take the backup there okay so we want to go for custom so write down select custom and click next select custom and click next now once i click next here in next page is asking select the item for backup so write down click on add item item means maybe a drive maybe a folder maybe a file click on add items now once you click add items here you can see there are so many options are available for you so i want to take the backup of this e drive there so write down expand the e drive but you can see here if you want to take the backup of this complete e drive check the box e drive but i don't want to take the backup of this e drive here i want to take the backup of e drive particular <coughs> folder so write down uh, for the last point expand the e drive then write down check the box data folder check the box data folder and click on ok and click on next check the box data folder and click on ok and click on next now once you click next is asking sir specify the destination type so where you want to keep this backup file you want to keep this backup file in same machine local drives means f drive or g drive any other drive or we have one more option that is called remote share folder remote share folder means I want to take the backup of this data, but I want to store this backup in my other machine here. In other machine, UNC path we have to give, network path we have to give. So here I want to go for local drive. So write down select local drive and click next. Select local drives and click next. Now once I click next here, in next page is asking sir, give the destination. Right? So destination, you can see here there are so many options out there. I want to go for F drive. So write down backup destination dash select f drive backup destination dash select f drive 
backup destination select f drive and click on next and click on backup backup destination f drive click next and click on backup and close so once you click backup your backup is started it will take some time then after that we have to close this one And remember here, this backup is an image backup and this backup is an encrypted backup here. Encrypted means what? When you when you go to the F drive, you can find one folder, backup folder is created. And you can find so many files are there. But directly we cannot open this file, we cannot check that because this is an encrypted backup you can say. But if you want to restore, if your some files are lost or complete folder is lost, we can restore this backup there. Now you can see here your backup is successfully completed. Click on close this one. If you minimize, if you want to verify, minimize, go to the computer, open your F drive, and in F drive, we can see one folder automatically is created by the name of Windows Image Backup. And if you open this folder, we take in the backup of System 1 machine, and you can see here these are the backup folder, right, which is created, and these are the files, and these files are encrypted files here. Okay. Directly, we cannot open, we cannot check this one. But now, if this original data, which is present in E drive, if it is lost, can we restore? Yes. So please write down our next lab recovering, recovering data, recovering data, recovering data. So first, we have to delete the original data or not here. If the data original data is lost, then only we can go for recovery here. So please write down one point. Open the E drive. Open the E drive and delete the completely data folder. Open the E drive and delete the completely data folder. Okay. So I'm going to my E drive now. Open the E drive. And delete this folder how to delete this folder completely i don't want in recycle bin also here shift delete if you press shift delete your complete data folder is lost it's not there and is not available in recycle bin but can we recover yes we have data folder backup in the f drive from we can recover but if you want to recover we have to take the help of windows server backup service so please write down next line in system one server in system one server open the windows server backup service In system one server open the windows server backup service select local backup select local backup and click on recover select local backup and click on recover now once you click this recover here one new page will open right and we have to follow this one and you can see here is asking here Sir, where is your backup files? Is backup files are in same machine, right? Or backup is other machine here? If you have another machine, we have to go to this one. Okay. So, but my backup files are available in same machine. So, write down, click next. Click next. Once you click next here, 
he's asking sir you want to make the schedule of the recovery or not i don't want to make any schedule i want to take the rec data recover now so right don't click next one more time so once i click next year in next page is asking sir what type of recovery you want select one option you want files and folder recovery or volume volume means drive right so i want to take the backup of recovery of files and folders here so right down select files and folders and click next select files and folders and click next now once you click next here just you have to wait for a few seconds here and we take in the backup of f drive uh, system one e drive so right down expand the system one expand the system one expand the e drive and select data folder expand the system one expand the e drive select data folder and click on next select data folder and click next now once you click next here in next page is asking sir where you want to recover these files give the destination address you want to restore in original location or you want to restore in another location another location means maybe a pen drive maybe your other drive like g drive any other drive here original location means what here in same location same e drive there so write down select original location and click next select original location and click on next and click on next and click on recover now once you click recover here once you click recover your recovery successfully started and after the write down close Now your data recovery is successfully done. Click on close. Then write down verification. Verification. Open the computer, open the E drive. Open the computer, open the E drive. And check the data folder. Open the computer, open the E drive. And check the data folder with files file one file two open the computer open the e drive check the data folder with files file one and file two if you're getting the same data same content so your recovery successfully has done here so open the computer open the e drive and you can see here are you finding the same folder with the same name in that are you finding the same files file one file two yes and check the content is same or not in file one Open the file one. Are you finding the same content here? Yes, is available. So this is what here? Recovery. See here. If the hard disk is burned or damaged, we can go for data recovery also. But in data recovery, by using third party application, we can do the recovery. But 100% you will not get the data back there. But if you have a backup, right? If you have a backup, 100% we can restore the data backup. And this is a very cheaper service because we no need to download the service uh, applications. We no need to install the application. We no need to wait for a long time here. Within some seconds, we can recover the data back there. Okay. So this is one topic we have done. Now come to the next topic today. Write down the heading. Network load balancing service. Our next topic is network load balancing service. Now, what is the use of this network load balance service? The microservice saying on IP network, whatever the services you are running, by the help of network load balancing service, we can redistrib redistribute the traffic from one host to other host. Host means servers here. Okay. Now, see here. Network load balancing we can use for file servers. We can use for web servers here. Okay. So, example here. In my organization, I have one web server. So, example, the system one is mine web server and the IP of this web server is example 10.0.0.1 I am hosting one website by the name of yahoo.com okay now one of the user I hosted over the internet one of the user is sitting in home PC and is requesting for www.yahoo.com website can we access or not yes so whenever you're typing www.yahoo.com the first request will not go to web server 
the first request will go to isp dns server in dns server we have a zone by the name of yahoo.com and is hosted on which ip 10.0.0.1 so request will go to dns server and by this address dns server will give the address to the client and by taking this address the client will reach to the web server to access the website okay now see here in the real time uh, my company is maintaining how many web servers here only one web server okay but assume it here after some time right my company is selling something and today we have 50 percent offer and the users want to connect so now tell me at a time how many users will connect to my website to access the items here to access the data i hosted over the internet so example lakhs of users billions of users will connect but as you wait at a time this many users are connecting here. how many users here thousands of users or more than thousands of users are connecting to access the website so now tell me at a time thousands of users is connecting to my website we have a network we have a load balancing problem or not here right so maybe some of the users will get the website very fast some of the user will get the website very slow but some of the user is not getting website because my server is busy there but if you observe here this is one thing but if you observe here day and night if you open any website like flipkart amazon or open yahoo or gmail lakhs of users billions of users at a time is connecting to the servers these servers companies these companies these servers are serving the services or not here an example one day if this web server is down crash so not only any user over the internet can access my company website no so you can see one more thing 365 is 24 by 7 the companies are running their websites without stopping without interrupting without load balancing they are running or not here so how they are running the websites how they are running the web servers because these companies big companies like gmail like amazon this flipkart right so these companies are not maintaining one web server they are maintaining multiple web server which is hosted in different different physical servers they are hosting their website in different different servers. if one server is down the other server is giving answer here so you can see my company is deciding to avoid the load, network load balancing and failover so for that reason my company is maintaining one more web server so we are hosting one more web server here on system 2 server and i'm hosting the same website by the name of yahoo.com and the ip of this website the server is 10.0.2 now i'm hosting one more web server here system 3 and the website name is same same i'm hosting the same website here yahoo.com and the ip of this server is 10.0.0.4 so now tell me how many web servers we have now for yahoo.com website we have three web servers okay but whenever the user is requesting to dns server to resolve the name to ip dns server is having this server in information what server here 10.1 so the client is taking the 10.0.0.1 IP and is requesting to the 10.1 web server. 10.1 web server will give the answer to this client or not here? Yes. But in future, 10.1 web server is busy or is not working here. So then what? So my DNS server will forward this request to other web servers, 10.2, 10.3? No. So DNS server job is only resolving the name to IP, not redistributing the traffic to one server to other server here automatically okay so what the dns server dns server is having only this server information so if this server is down as the administrator manually we have to go to dns server and tell to the dns server now next available web server is this one that is what here 10.2 so now if i have this information manually if i given now next request will go to my 10.2 web server 10.2 web server will give the answer to my client right but assume it 10.2 web server is busy there are so many users are connected and the service is very slow so then the users are complaining sir we are unable to access your website sir so then we have to go to again to dns server we have to tell to dns server this next server is available for you for my users 10.3 so now the request will go to 10.3 web server and 10.3 web server will give the answer okay but here if one web server is down the request will not go to other web server so dns server job is what resolving the name to ip address right so this process how we are redistributing the traffic manually or automatically manually so it means if you want to do manually you know that when your server is going to slow when your servers are downing no so what you have to do you have to do manual monitoring manual monitoring is what 24 by 7 365 days you have to sit in front of servers and you have to do manual monitoring if any server is down request to dns server this is available if any server is not working tell to dns server this server is available so not only 365 days 24 by 7 as admin can we sit in front of the servers can we do the monitoring no, it's not possible here. I want monitoring. I want redistribution automatically from one host to 
other hosts. So then Microsoft is saying take the help of network load balancing service here to redistribute the traffic one surviving host to other host here. So how to use this service? So what the Microsoft is saying do one thing. <clears throat> In all these web servers, we have to add network load balancing service here. So in this web server, in system one web server, we have to go as the administrator, we have to install network load balancing service. In system two web server also, we have to install network load balancing service. In system three web server also, we have to install network load balancing service, right? But we have to do the configuration of network load balancing service only in one server. And this information automatically will replicate to other web servers, other network load balancing servers. Now what we have to do first we have to take these are the physical ips which is given to my physical machines here but we have to take one virtual ip here we have to take one public ip and on this ip we have to make clustering we have to make what here clustering here right so we have to take one purchase one public ip from isp so example isp is giving the public ip to me this one that is 10.0.0.254 right and make this ip as a cluster ip now did you know what is clustering here if anyone is asking to you Sir, what is clustering between the hard disk? What is clustering between the machines? By using clustering, we can make all the machine in one group. We can make all the machine in one group. If one machine is down, if one machine is not working, the service will run in other machine, right? The request will go to other machine and continuously without breaking, without interrupting, we can allow the user to access. So this feature is called what here? Clustering feature. So we are making the clustering on this web servers here. Okay. So if in case in future if the web server is failed by the help of clustering right by using this fail or clustering we can request to other server to access the services so we made this ip as a cluster ip on this public ip so now on this public ip on this cluster ip we have to add the host how many available hosts are there system one is one host system two is host and system three is one host here so we have to add the host here so we are adding the host one system one and is running on which ip 10.0.0.1 so like this, add the host to system 2 and is running on 10.0.2. Add the host 3, which is running on 10.0.0.3 machine, right? Only one in one server, we have to do this configuration. Automatically, this configuration will replicate to my system 2 server also and system 3 network load balancing server also. So automatically, this information will update here. So your cluster IP will add here 10.0.0.54. And here in this one, your host will add system 1. Is host which is running on 10.1 and system 2 is host which is running on 10.02 so it means the system 2 is having information of other host which is running in this group in this cluster by the help of network load balancing service now here also automatically this information will add that is cluster ip 10.0.0.254 and in that host will add system 1 is one host that is running on 10.0.1 system 2 is one host which is running on 10.0.2 and system 3 is host which is running on 10.0.0.3 now tell me by using this network load balancing by using this cluster one host is having other host information or not here and between these three hosts automatically we have replication if any host is down this information will update to other host here okay so now now go to the DNS server. In DNS server, we have to add the cluster IP that is 10.0.0.254. Okay. So next day, whenever the client is requesting to DNS server, DNS server will forward the request to my network load balancing. So network load balancing will decide now which host is available for this client to give the answer. So right now my host one is available. So my system one host will give the answer to this client. If the system one host is down, so your network load balancing will forward the request to my system two host and system two host will give the answer if the system two host is busy so request will go to the system three host and system three host will give the answer so not only at a time all these three servers are running or not here so at a time thousands of users can access this yahoo.com website yes we can access so in feature suddenly my host one web server 10.1 web server is down here it's not working so it is removed from this network and this information will update to automatically to my other host which is available in network so now our the other host is having information now system 2 system 3 host is available to give the answer to client so system 3 and system 4 will give the answer 
So not only monitoring is automatic and second thing redistributing the traffic from one surviving host to other surviving host is automatic or not here, right? If it is busy also, the request will go to other servers here. So this is a feature of network load balancing service here. Okay, so we'll see now. But remember here, one thing is very important. If you want to go for network load balancing, how many minimum machines we require? So microservice saying we require minimum two machines and maximum we can use 32 machines here. How many machines here? 30. One network load balancing cluster IP will support up to how many machines here? Minimum two we require for this configuration and maximum how many? 32 host it will be accept for you. Okay, so you can see in the slide what is written here. The microservicing network load balancing used to redistribute the algorithm to balance IP traffic load across multiple hosts. It helps to improve the scalability, availability, business critical IP based services and network load balancing service also provide high availability because it detects the host failure automatically, redistribute the traffic to surviving host. If one host is down, so other host will give the answer by using network load balance service. And in Windows Server 2012 server operating system, in NLB clusters, we can have with two machines or maximum 32 machines we can use, right? So please copy this one. Then we'll see the practical. It's done, finish, all of you. So please come to the practical, write down the heading. 
installing network load balancing service. So minimum how many hosts we require? Two hosts we require. Okay, two machine minimum we require. So the system one we have and system two we have on this machines will do the network load balance service. In both machines we have to install network load balance service. So please write down. In system one server, in system one server, login as administrator. In system one server, login as administrator. Next slide on open the server manager console and click on add roles and features. Open the server manager console and click on add roles and features. Click on add roles and features and click four times. Next, next, next. Click on add roles and features and click four times. Next, next, next. Click on add roles and features and click four times. Next, next, next. So click next. One more time next. We are sitting on system one and you can see interface IP is what? 10.0. One we have. Click next. And one more time next. We are in features. And if you come down here. You can find option network load balancing. So write down check the box network load balancing. <coughs> check the box network load balancing. Click on add features. Check the box network load balancing and click on add features. And click next. And click on install and close. Check the box network load balancing. Click on next. Click on install and close. Now it will take some time, but the same service we have to install in system two server also. So please write down. Install the network load balancing service in system two server also. Install the network load balancing service in system two server. The method and procedure is same there. Okay, so I'm going to my system two server now. I logged as a domain administrator in this machine and you can see here <coughs> this machine is having 2012 server operating system and this machine is system 2 is working on the domain of zoom.com now we have to open the server manager console and click on add roles and features and click on next click on next we are sitting on system 2 and the system Network interface IP is 10.0.2 there. Click on next here. And one more time next. Then if you come down here, you can find network load banner service. We have to check the box and click on add features. Then click next. Click on install. And after that, close it. Okay. Now next, what we have to do, we have to create the we have to create the cluster. IP address. So please write down next line. Side heading write down creating cluster. Creating cluster. Creating cluster IP address. And we have to do this configuration only in one computer. So we'll do this configuration in system one. Then this configuration you can find in system two also there.
Now you can find installation is succeeded on the system to server close it this one and if you go to the start button you can find your network load balancing services add it now i'm going back to my system one server here and here also installation of network load balancing service succeeded click on close so write down uh, steps in this one in system one server open the network load balancing service in system one server open the network load balancing service open the network load balancing service so once you open the network load balancing service now here there is a no cluster address we have to add so write down right click on network load balancing clusters right click on network load balancing cluster now once you right click on this network load balancing clusters click on new cluster Now, once you click this new cluster, one new page will open. In this page, it's asking, sir, give the host name. So I want to add the first host. What is my first host name? System1. So write down, type the host name, dash, SYS1, and click on connect. Type the host name, dash, SYS1, and click on connect. Now, once you click connect here, here you can find interface name and interface IP also. So once you click connect here, it's connecting. You can find interface name is Ethernet 0 and IP of my interface is what? 10.0. One in the lab, your IPs are different that you have to check, okay? So right down, click next. Now once you click next, it's giving the information. Your interface IP is 10.1, that is detected and is subnet marks is 255.0.0.0, that is correct. Click on next. Now once you click next here, here is asking add the cluster IP address. So right down. Add the cluster IP address. Dash click on add. Add the cluster IP address. Click on add. Click on add. Now once you click on add here, it's asking sir you're going for IPv4. So please tell me what is a cluster IP address here. So the cluster IP address is which I purchased from ISP. That IP we have to type. So example 10.0.254 and that subnet marks we have to type. So write down. Type the IPv4 address dash. Type the IPv4 address dash 10.0.0.254. Okay. Then subnet mark 255.0.0.0. Subnet marks 255.0.0.0. Then click OK and click Next. Click OK. It's accepted here. Then click on Next. And uh, one more time. Next. So click one more time next and click on finish now once you click finish here you can see here now one cluster address is created 10.0.254 in that one host is added on ethernet 0 and you can see here if you select the cluster the system one is host is added but status is what pending. pending but is reading the information you have to wait for some seconds here maybe sometime if your network is slow it will take some time at least five minutes but if you wait in the status, it will show you converged there. Are you finding converged? Yes. So it means this host is added to this cluster. Now it's ready to work there. Okay. So like this. Now we have to add the host to under this cluster. We don't need to create one new cluster address here. Under this address, cluster address, we have to add the new host there. Okay. So that is host 2 and host 3 we have to add. So write down next line. In network load balancing service, in network load balancing service, right click on cluster IP address. In network load balancing service, right click on cluster IP address. Right click on cluster IP address 10.0.0.254. Right click on cluster IP address 10.0.254 and click on add host to cluster. Click on add host to cluster. Click on add host to cluster. So once you click this add host to cluster, one new page will open is asking host name. So write down host name dash SYS2 and click on connect. Host name dash SYS2, click on connect 
and click on next 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 finish just we have to click next next finish so your host row is added then you can go for verification so you can see here once i click on connect it is reading the information if your network connectivity is good you will get the information if your network connectivity is something is problem is there so you will not get the answer you will get host is unreachable maybe please in the lab if you're getting here host is unreachable so it means some network cable or network connectivity is slow or network is not working properly background is you have to check but is what showing here connected so it is detected on that is what here ethernet 0 and ip of my address is system 2 is what 10.0.2 click on next and one more time next and click on finish so once you click finish here so you can see your host to also is added but what is showing status pending so we have to wait for some time so it will show you what converts so write down verification so write down verification <clears throat> in network load balancing service in network load balancing service in network load balancing service check the host 1 and host 2 check the host 1 and host 2 status dash converged check the host 1 and host 2 status dash converged in network load balancing service check the host 1 and host 2 status dash converged so once is showing converge here see here i have some network connectivity background problem is already showing what here unconfigured but if you wait for some time it will be refreshed and it will show you what here converge so if it is showing converge so it means successfully these machines are added to my host now in future if one host is not working so the request will go to automatically to the next host to server so this is called redistributing the traffic automatically on ip network here okay any doubt so we done backup we done network load balancing come to the next topic we have some topics here some topics already we covered with theory practical some topics are there we are going to cover with the theory here so write down some topics are there please copy these names It's done, finished. Not only out of this many topics, how many topics already we cover with theory and practical? Domain service, we done? Yeah. Domain service, what is a, this domain service also is called Active Directory domain service. We seen the first 15 days on the Active Directory. By the help of Active Directory domain service, we can configure the domain mod, right? And we can configure in domain model, we can configure DC, we can configure clients, member servers, user management. We've seen for, by the help of Active Directory Domain Service how to make one backup server ADC, how to make RODC server also. 
right? How to create the trust between two different domains? How to create the logical structure of active directory like under this domain? How to create the child domains, grandchild domains, NDF domain, complete forest, right? We see in this one. Now, like this, the last one that is called certificate service. And the last class, I see that certificate. By the help of certificate, whatever data we are transferring from client to server and server to client, that data will flow in encrypted format. And the last class we see certificate is we are using for HTTP site, right? So by the help of HTTP site here, right? So when you're hosting the HTTPS website, we require certificate. And we've seen if you have public certificate, how to take, and we've seen we have private certificate, we have to take the help of self send certificate, we have to generate it. And by the help of certificate, we can host the site. And whenever the data is transferring from browser to server, server to browser, your client machine, so this data will flow over the internet encrypted format this one okay uh, on that day i say that certificate not only used for https website we can use for ftp we can use for remote desktop service or you can use for dc and client also when the data when the users are logging from the client machines so the client is by sitting on client machine user is typing the name and password and this name and password or this data whatever data transferring from client to server this should be encrypted encrypted, uh, encrypted between the client and server we can take the help of certificate service but this topic we not cover we are going to cover but theory only is available so that is called lightweight directory service write management service is called rms also and one is federation service called fs also so first we'll see what is the use of this lightweight directory service here so the experts are saying this lightweight directory service is designed for authentication purpose it's designed for authentication if you want authentication we can take the help of lightweight directory service we can create one separate directory here so now, right now, we are working on domain model to do easy and centralized management. So, example, this is my system one. Is my server? Is my DC by the help of Active Directory service by the help of DNS service? In system one server, already we have one directory, that is ntds.dit. This is the Active Directory. So, whenever I'm creating the user account in server, this user account is going to store in my Active Directory database or not here? And whenever my users are logging to this client machines. When the users are logging to this client machines, so not only this client machine will give authentication or your server will give authentication. Your server, your DC will give authentication or not here. But check it out for authentication purpose, right? When you're going for authentication, how many services are background only is busy for authentication. So first, the client is forwarding the request to Kerberos protocol, and Kerberos protocol is forwarding the request to DNS, and DNS forwarding the request to Active Directory, and Active Directory forwarding the request to database then Active Directory is giving authentication back to your client and then successfully user can lock it. So now tell me, only for authentication, how many services are busy here? Three services. One is Kerberos protocol, one is <laughs> DNS, and one is Active Directory. But assume it, one day, your DNS services success, uh, DNS services failed. It's not working. DNS services failed. Active Directory is working, users are working, server is working, clients are working, everything is okay. But your DNS services stop. Your DNS service is not working. So now tell me, any user can log in now to the client machine? No. Why? Accounts are not there? Yeah, accounts are there. Name and password also is correct. But your Active Directory also is available. But your Active Directory information is available in DNS server in the form of Active Directory into the primary zone, in the form of six service records. If the DNS is not working, so DNS is not having information of Active Directory. So no one user can log into this client machine. This is one problem. Second problem is what? If at a time hundreds of users or thousands of users are requesting to my DC for authentication. So not only my DC is busy only for authentication or not here. But tell me the job of the DC only authentication? No. The job of the DC is authorization also. Authorization which user should access what service, what data, what policies, what items user should access. My DC is giving authorization also. So if my DC, just five minutes, I will call you. Just wait for five minutes, I will call you. So if my DC is busy only for authentication, Right, if my DC is busy only for authentication, right? So then my services are slow or not here. So we have this problem also, right? One. So now we want to avoid these two problems, right? We want faster login service here. In future, if the DNS service is not working, so still my user should log into the client machine. So that's why the microservice saying you can take the help of lightweight directory service. But remember here, the lightweight directory service is not designed for small network. It's designed for large network big network because if you have a small network you have dc adc if dc is not working adc will give authentication if adc is not working dc will give authentication but if you have a large network your dc adc is there but still your network services log on services are very 
slow there. And our DNS server is separate and that is not working. So then we can go for lightweight directory service. So Microsoft is saying if you have large network, big network, and we want authentication server should be separate. We don't want authentication by DC. I want authorization permission should be by DC, but I want authentication server should be separate in my network. So then we have to take the help of network load balancing service. So Microsoft is saying, sorry, we have to take the help of lightweight directory service. So Microsoft is saying take one separate machine here. So example, I'm taking system two machine and this machine should be a part of our domain member server. And in this machine, we have to install lightweight directory, active directory, lightweight directory service. Okay. Now in this lightweight directory service, we require database or not here. So database means we require user accounts, but remember here in lightweight directory service, we can add the users. We can add the users, but we cannot create the users. We cannot change the password. If you want to change the password, creating user deleting, we have to do in DC in active directory. Okay. But here, what we can do, we can keep the users information. We can keep the users information. So what we can do, we can go to this machine in lightweight directory server. We have to create some stores. We have to create some store. So store means what groups store means what here groups. We are creating one database here. Okay. And this is stores technically is called instance here. It's called what here instance like last class. We created OUs. We created groups in groups in OUs. We keep the users information or not here. Yes. So like this, we have to create the store. I'm creating store one and in store one is having user one and user two and user three information like this. I'm creating the store two also here. In store two, that is called instance two. And in this instance, example, I have S1 and S2 user information. So next day, now when my users are logging, maybe U1, U2, or U3 user is logging. So now the request will not go to this DNS service. The request will not go to this active directory. So the request will go to my lightweight directory server. And lightweight directory server is having name and password. Lightweight directory server will give authentication. Then user can log in. So now tell me, my active directory is busy now. No, my DNS is busy now. No, in one day, if the DNS is not working, still my users can log into my network, accessing the services So by the help of this lightweight directory service. So we are making one separate authentication server for my network, but it's suitable for big networks, not for small network there. Okay. So if anyone is asking to you in an interview in exam, sir, when we require this lightweight directory service, so you can say, sir, in my network, I have a large network, big network, but I want authentication server should be separate. I don't want authentication by DC. All right. I don't want authentication should be depend on DNS and active directory. So I want authentication server separately. So we are going for lightweight directory service. Okay. So that's why you can see in the slide what is written here. Lightweight directory service provide a LDAP accessible directory. So here one directory is creating and here directory name is what here in active directory yes. NTDS dot DIT. But here one directory is creating that is called what here LDAP directory lightweight directory access protocol lightweight directory access protocol one is working here and service that support to the identity management scenario means for authentication purpose we are using to identify username and password and removing all the active directory domain service features there is no Kerberos authentication there is no forest no dc no gc uh, sites group false is not depend and does not depend on dependency on dns also it's not depending on dns and second thing each lightweight directory server can host multiple directory and that directories are called stores and that is store is called what here instance we can create multiple instance we can keep the users allow the user to access this one right so please copy this page and uh, one more thing announcement is there we are finishing the mcsc session so my management want to take the back uh, take the feedback from your site regarding this theory session and practical so please copy this slide i will call to my management to take the feedback they will take the feedback also okay So please copy this page.
now come to the next one next service we have that is rms and rms stands right management service here now this right management service special is designed for your web server purpose right if you want to restrict the web server content we can take the help of this right management service here so we'll see now example right now we have one web server in our organization and we want to host one website we are hosting one website by the name of example gmail.com right and i want to allow the user to access this website over the internet so one of the user is sitting on his home pc client pc and is going to the browser and is requesting for my organization website is typing www.gmail.com so once you type www.gmail.com the page will open and in this web page you can find so many contents here like we have word files we have a picture files we have video files we have ppt files we have pdf files we have so many types of files are there so not only on this content the user is having what permission allow permission or deny permission example once you open the yahoo.com website or gmail.com website or microsoft so on that there are so many contents are there so on these contents you have allow or deny permission i love permission so now tell me my user can access word file picture file videos ppt file pdf file yes but the what the user want to do the user want on the user computer we have one printer the user computer is having printer and the user want to take the print of this word file can we take the word file print yes permission is what here granted allow user can take the print of this word file now the user is watching this video right and the user want to download this video to local hard disk can we download this video file or not here yes we can download we have third party applications we have application by the help of that we can download and the user is opening this ppt file or by the help of this ppt file is checking the slides and the user want to copy this complete page to his local hard disk copy paste can we do the copy paste here yes option is available you can copy and you can paste to your local hard disk and the user want to download this home page example this home page is very graphical page and the user want to download this home page to his local hard disk can we download or not like last class i say that when hosting the websites i say that the first first pages of every website i downloaded yahoo gmail microsoft zoom i downloaded it right so that is called what here import and export here okay so not only on this many content user is copying the home page user is taking the print of this word file user is watching this video and downloading the video here and the user is seeing the ppt file right and his user is copying this file to the local hard disk so not only on this many contents user is having what permission allow permission or deny permission allow but one day my boss is coming he says that allow the user to access this page but don't allow the user to go for import and export this page allow the user to see this word file read the content but don't allow the user to take the print of this file allow the user to watch this video but don't allow the user to download this video file allow the user to use access the ppt file here right 4.5 but don't allow the user to copy this powerpoint file to your or contain to your local hard disk here so on the web page contain i want restriction so the microservicing on web page contain if you want restriction you can take the help of rms service by the help of rms service we can implement this rms service to my web server to my website to restrict the content here and see here one more uh example whenever you are uh, booking some example mcsc exam or when you going for online something booking something and you are getting one mail also there example especially when you book the mcsc exam you will get one confirmation sir your exam has scheduled on this so and so date so and so center you can come to this one but don't reply this mail don't reply this mail like some from banks some from companies will get this mail don't reply this mail only this is confirmation like when you booking the flight also you are getting this one this is only for confirmation but don't reply but if you reply then what the mail will go no why because it is restricted by this rms server so by using rms server we can restrict the forwarding the mails also there right so that's why in the slide you can see microsoft is saying rms server enable customer to keep the internal information internally confidential file we can protect email forwarding we can protect and web applications we can protect i want to give some application to user to access but i don't want to allow the user to download this application here we can go, go like this and benefits are what since safeguard sensitive internal information digital infos organization policies whatever the restriction contained restriction right you want to apply you can apply 
and we can protect the information over the internet here right so i will show you one i have one diagram here please try to understand by the help of this diagram how is working here now we have three servers here one is active directory server that is my dc and one is my rms server right and one is my database server database server means my web server example okay now who is having right to access all these servers who is having right to manage the servers administrator and technically our administrator is called author also here it's called what here author so as the administrator as a author i am logging to my machine right and from my machine i am connecting to my rms server and through rms server i am applying some restrictions user should access some rights user should not access some content here right now who is going to access this database server my users and the users are called recipient here users is called what here recipient so as a user i am sitting on my client machine and as admin, I'm distributing the files to my users to access here. So user is sitting on this client machine, right? And the user is requesting to RMS server to access the database server. So RMS server will verify, okay, content is done, right? RMS server is allowing the user to access this database server, web server, but on administrator restriction, whatever the administrator has, apply the restrictions, content, so that user can access. So now try to one more here. I have one website and on this website, how, how is it restricted here? How is working here? So one of my user is opening my company website. The user is going to the company website is opening. And the website is open and this website, the user actually is going for salary reports. The user is checking the salary report here. The page is open, but you can see is written clearly. This page is protected document page here. Okay. The user want to go for the print of this page. The user is going to files and clicking on print. Once you click print, you're getting message. What message? You do not have that permission here okay the user want to copy this home page import export the user is going to the file and the user is clicking on import and export so once you click import and export the user is getting the same error said so you're not having this permission here and the user want to copy this content to this local hard disk here so the user is dragging on the content and right click and copy so once you click copy here you're getting one more error so you do not have this permission okay you cannot access so the user is feeling very bored here Actually, what I have permission here. I want to know what permission I have. So do one thing, go to the permissions here. You can find your permission, what permission you have, right? So go to your permissions and you can see what permission you have. You have only view permission, but you cannot take the print, you cannot copy, and you cannot access the programs here. So this restriction we have. So not tell me in the real time. If you have a private website, you're hosting over the internet, and you want to allow the user to access but you want to allow the user to access on your conditions, on your content restrictions. Can we apply RMS server or not here? Yes, we can use it, right? So please write down, copy this page here. Now come to the last one, next service here. We have federation service here. So when we require this federation service, so federation service also we can use for our website purpose to identify the user confirmation. So in my network, I have one website. I host it here by the name of gmail.com. I'm allowing the user to access over the internet. The user is accessing the website over the internet but i want to restrict this website with the name and password example whenever you type gmail.com www.gmail.com or any bank website to check your statement to check your account directly can you check your content can you check your data can you check your statements no we have to type the username and password so i want to restrict this website with the username and password so i'm telling to my programmer so restrict this website with the name and password so whenever the user typing www.gmail.com once you press enter First user has to type the name and password. So the user is typing u1 at the rate gmail.com and password. So once you press enter, the request will go to Gmail server. Gmail server will confirm the name and password to the browser, to the client browser, and then authentication is granted. Then user can access this content. User can access this page, user can access. So page is protected over the internet. Unknown people cannot access, only known user can access. But on this content also, I want restrictions. Right on this content also, I want restrictions. So I'm telling to my programmer, so restrict this content also. 
so to, I'm telling to programmer set the name and password here. So the programmer is setting the name and password on this container. Whenever the user accessing any sub page or any link or any data is asking name and password. So whenever the user accessing the word file is asking name and password type it. When the user accessing the uh, picture file is asking name and password. When the user accessing PDF file, PPT file is asking name and password. When the user accessing the video file and PPT file is asking the name and password. Whenever the user accessing other page, example, I have one more page by the name of mail. So once you click this one is asking name and password. So we have a security or not here. But tell me how many times my user has to type the name and password here. One time or multiple times. Multiple times. Whenever the user opening any page, user has to type the name and password. Whenever the user close, close this page again open is asking name and password. When the user access other content is asking name and password. So we have a security, right? The username and password is confirmed. Then only user can access. Otherwise, user cannot access this page. So we have a full security. But here, my user is saying, is coming, is complaining, sir. We are feeling very bored, sir. Sir, we are accessing the website over the internet, right? We are locking with the name and password. That is okay. And this content also is restricted, sir. Whenever we are opening any content, is asking name and password, right? Otherwise, not allowing to us. So we are typing the name and password how many times? Multiple times. So the user is saying same directory. Whenever I'm accessing, right? When I'm closing, when I'm opening, again accessing. Next day, when I'm accessing again, is asking name and password. So the user is saying, sir, multiple times. We are typing the name and password. The user is saying, sir, we want, we don't want to type the username and password multiple times. The user is saying, sir, we require this service. That is called single sign-on service. The user is saying, we want single sign-on service. So what is the meaning of single sign-on service? The user is saying, only one time we have to type the name and password. So once you type the name and password, so this name and password has to be confirmed. But whenever we are accessing the Word file, PPT file, PDF file, picture file, video file, so automatically my server has to give authentication. Right, I want this page should be authenticated. This page should be restricted with the name and password. But we don't want to type the name and password multiple times. Only one time we want to type the name and password. So we want to allow the user to access this page over the internet with security. But we want to give single sign-on service. And this single sign-on service we can give by the help of this federation service here. Right. So by using this federation service, we can provide single sign-on service. So the Microsoft is saying here, you can do one thing. You can maintain one federation server for your web server. So take one separate machine and configure this federation service. So once you configure this federation service, so this machine is called federation server, but we are making the federation server for Gmail server. So con take one machine and configure this machine as a federation server here. Okay. Now this federation server is working for Gmail. So now whenever the user is typing www.gmail.com, when the user is typing username and password, the request first will go to federation server. And the federation server is not having username and password here. So federation server will forward the request name and password to Gmail to take authentication. Gmail will give authentication and his information is available in federation server and federation server Gmail federation server will give authentication to client. Now user can open the page. So now whenever the user opening these pages here, it will not ask the name and password, right? Physically, it will not ask, but background your federation server will give the name and password to authenticate to this user to access the content. So now tell me this time, how many times my user is typing name and password? Only one time and but this page is protected. This page continues protected by the help of this Federation server. Okay, so Federation server is giving the name and password and this is called what here? Single sign on service here. Okay, this is one. Now we have one more example here. Now if you create one account, right, with the name and password by this account, can we access other company website also? With this name and password, can we access other company website also? Over the internet, can we access or not? Yes, we are doing. We are accessing here. For example, I have one Facebook server here. So this is a Facebook web server we have. Okay, one Facebook website is hosted here. This is a Facebook web server. But one day, what I am doing here? I am going to the browser. I am typing www.facebook.com. So not tell me. Once you type facebook.com, page will open. Yes. But before page is asking to log in or not here. So what we are typing, we are typing u1 at the rate gmail.com and password. We are typing username and password gmail.com. So not only once I press enter, the request will go to Gmail server or a Facebook server here. Facebook server because we are accessing Facebook. But tell me the Facebook is having u1 at the rate gmail.com and password. No. So not only if the account is not there, so Facebook will allow to you. To access this website with this name and with this ID with this password 
no you cannot access but we are accessing here how is possible this facebook also is maintaining their own federation server and between the facebook federation server between the gmail federation server we have to create the trust we have to create the trust like glass class we created the trust from one domain to other domain right we create the trust here so once you create the trust now so when the request go to facebook the facebook will forward the request to its local federation server and this federation server will forward the request to gmail and gmail federation server will give the answer to the facebook then your authentication is granted so now tell me can we access this facebook website or not here but tell me to access these two websites how many accounts how many email ids how many password we have to maintain only one right so like this can we access the other social website also by using this id yes by using one single name single id and with a single password so like this you can see it nowadays the bank also is using this service federation service because if you have account in hdfc bank and they are giving debit card to you now can you use this debit card in other bank atms also can we draw the money or not but we have to maintain different different passwords or different ids no only with one id one password can we draw the money with different atm centers also or not here yes we can access so this is what federation service is working so by the help of federation service we are giving single sign on service one and by using federation service by using one account one password we can access other website also we can access other services also here okay so you can see here in the slide what is written the microservice saying federation service provide an identity access solution means name and password confirmation and federation service is a service that allow for the creation of federation relationship organizations for web based application authentication and second thing deployment federation server in multiple organizations to facilitate business to business transactions and federation service provides a web based single sign on service to your users and federation service was improved in 2000 so windows server 2008 actually is introduced in 2008 but in 2008 federation service by default is not there in operating system we have to go to microsoft website we have to download this service here but in 2008 r2 in 2012 this service is available by default we can go to server manager console and from there we can add this service here okay so please copy this page
it's done finish so we've seen what is lightweight directory service what is rms service what is a federation service here so till now we completed our mcs session right so we have done but example i have one question here if anyone is asking to you this question sir federation service which company has launched in which year if anyone is asking to you sir which two companies has introduced this federation service in our it world what you have to say microsoft or ibm what ibm, IBM. Here, everything is not started by IBM. Everything is not started by Microsoft here. So these two services, this service federation service as launched by Gmail, Google actually. is launched by Google. And you can see in 2006 and 2007, you can see if you have a Google account, you can access the Orkut also, right? If you have an account in Orkut here, can you access the Google account, Gmail account? Yes, we can. So these two companies, Orkut and Gmail, Right, your Google started this federation relationship. Then later on, so many companies like so many banks, so many organizations like this service for their business and they're adopted there. At the same way, the Microsoft also is adopted this service here. It's available in Microsoft Voice. So till now, we completed all MCSE theory sections and practicals here. Okay. Now, we seen how to configure our domain model, how to configure DC, clients, users, DNS server, DSCP server, web server, file server, storage server, we seen and we've seen how to configure VPN server, right? We have seen all these things here, but we've done the configuration only in two machines here. But in the real time, you're going to configure all these services in two machines? No, right? So in the real time, your network should be like this. Here, we have a diagram here. See this diagram? Already we've done all this configuration. We know how to do it. But how to design in our network, we have to check this one. So I want to go for domain model to do easy and centralized management. So I'm making the system one as a DC. But when I'm making this machine as a DC, in this machine, I have two services. One is Active Directory service and one is a DNS service. We have two services. And the IP address I'm using 192.168.1.101 or you can use class A10. You can use class B172, no problem. IP used for giving the address to a computer to establish communication, okay? But what is the preferred DNS of this machine? Same, 101. Why? Because DNS is running. But later on, my boss is saying, I don't want a DNS server here. Can I make DNS server separately here? Yes. yes. Can I configure DSCP also we require, web server also we require, remote desktop we require, but in a separate, separate machine. So we have to configure some machine as a clients, right? And we are making some a file server, FTP server in 104 machine. We are making DNS server in 105 machine. We are making a DSCP server in 106 web server it's a 107 remote desktop 108 for applications and adc also is there so why we require adc adc is a backup server if i create some account in dc that is going to replicate to my adc if the dc is failed so by the help of adc can we give authentication or not here but in future if the dc completely failed crashed so can we convert adc to dc yes, yes. option is available but later on my boss is saying sir we don't want dns server in system one 101 machine can I remove this DNS service? Can I configure DNS service separately here? Yes. So now my DNS service is running in which machine? 105 machine. And this machine IP, remember here, 105 IP will become preferred DNS for all these clients here, right? But remember here, if you're making any machine as a separate, so first this machine should be a part of our domain. This machine should be a member server. In this machine, we have to log in as a domain admin. And already we know how to configure all these services in these services, how to create the data there, right? So we have, this is a network, but I'm maintaining one router also, right? I'm maintaining router. The private IP is 192.168.1.254. The public IP I have purchased from ISP, that is 202.153.32.120. So on this public IP, right, I want to configure this NAT service. So not only, once I configure the NAT service, my users, example, in my LAN, I have nearly 100 computers, which is running on private IP. So not only all these users can access the internet by using this one public IP or not here. Yes, but at the same time, Right? By using router, by using an ad, I'm connecting the private network to public network. But the same way, I want to allow the users who is sitting outside the network to connect to my private network or not here. So that's why on the same IP, I'm creating one more service that is called VPN. That is my RAS server on this public IP on 202. So now as an administrator, I'm sitting outside the network. As admin, I'm sitting outside the network. So example, I'm sitting in my home PC. 
as an admin, I'm sitting on a home PC. I'm creating one VPN connection. So not only by using this VPN connection through this RAS server, can we connect to my private network or not here? We can access the resources. So in the real time, your network should be like this. But there are so many other servers are missing in this diagram here, like RODC server, right? SCSI server is missing here, right? Or you can say one WDS server also is not there, but we know how to configure. And if you want to configure tree structure, forest also, can we expand this network or not here? Yes, yeah, so in the real time, your network should be like this. So please take the snapshot, right? So it's easy for you when you're designing the network, so you can design like this. Is not there in the Okay, it's finished. Now see here. We finish all the MCSC stage classes with theory and practical. But the thing is what we have to become perfect. Because we learn all the sessions, we learn the topics, we learn the practical, but we have to become perfect because when you go to the interviews, right? So it will ask the question, sir, what is active directory? What is DNS? If I'm facing the problem here, how to troubleshoot? So how to become perfect? By practice. By practice. If you do the practical multiple times, then it will become perfect. So that's why the Zoom is providing one year lab free to you, right? So you can come right from uh, 18th or 17th or 18th of this next week, right? You can come, you can do the practical, right? So you can do the extra labs. Right, and the timings are if you want to do, right? So in morning, if you're free, that is 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. The lab is free, you can come, you can do the practical, right? And afternoon, 2 p.m. to till 4 p.m. The lab is free, you can come to the practical in evening, 7.30 p.m. to till 9 of p.m., right? The lab is free and you can come, you can do the practical. So the Zoom is providing one year lab free to you. If you have, right, if you have any, uh, questions you can ask there if you want to do the extra laps you can come you can do it but ask to the lab faculty when you're coming sir what topic is going on so in each day at least can we do two practicals or not here we know the theory we know the concept just we have to do practical and please whenever wherever you're facing the errors here please remember these errors and try to troubleshoot and note down this one because whenever you face this error in the real time also will face the same error so if you know this error if you know the answer right so easily quickly Within some seconds, we can troubleshoot the problem or not here. So this is one. And still, one more thing is there. If you have any questions, any doubts, so I'm available for you. You can come to me, right? So you can ask. I will help you to clear your doubts here. If any student has missed some classes here, right? So please give me the topics names, which class you missed. So next batch, when I'm going to take that class, right? That day you can come and you can sit and you can attend my that session there. Okay? So this is one. Any doubt? And apart from that, I say that regarding MCSC certification also, because when you're going for the uh, your interviews here is asking this ID that is called Microsoft ID and in your CV on the top after your name you have to write this ID really because by seeing this ID the, the companies will verify okay you are certified right and the companies require certified student also right so we require good theoretical knowledge we require practical right any doubt so thank you very much for attending my classes here and best of luck to become best and perfect administrator, right? And if you have any doubt anywhere, you have my mobile number, right? You can contact me. I will help you to this one, okay? So thank you very much. Bye. See you.